On Wednesday, the New York Mets signed Julio Tehran to a major league deal. Will he help solidify their rotation? We'll discuss that on today's show. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. For brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, ebaymotors.com is there for you. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay is guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, the New York Mets got rained out again on Wednesday, which sets up a single admission doubleheader on Thursday with a 12-10 start. It also puts the Mets in a position where they will now play 15 games in 14 days. So they needed pitching. And they could not insert Jose Budo or Joey Lucchese into the rotation right away because they were optioned at the beginning of the season in the minor leagues. So they had to spend 15 days in the minors. They're not eligible to join the rotation until April 12th, which left the Mets in a position where either they had to sign somebody or call up somebody who's not on the 40-man roster. So instead of putting a top prospect into the rotation right now, they signed Tehran. And I will note, or I will go into this a little more at length in the next segment when it comes to the doubleheader. Jose Buda will make a start on Thursday, but that's only because the Mets are allowed to have a 27th man for the doubleheader. So let's get back to Tehran, though. We all are familiar with his work. He spent nine years with the Atlanta Braves, first debuting in 2011 at 20 years old. He was still a rookie in 2013 when he pitched to a 3 2 ERA in 30 starts and over 180 innings pitched. Finished fifth in the Rookie of the Year voting that year. Ended up being an all-star in 2014 and 2016. If you remember, there was a run there where Tehran was sort of a front-of-the-rotation guy for the Braves and had a lot of success. His ERA in Atlanta was 3.67 over 226 starts. I think it was 229 games pitched. Um, he's bounced around, though, since leaving the Braves in 2019. He had a season in 2020 where he pitched an ERA over 10. Um, of course, that was the COVID year. It was 10 games with the Angels, but still not a lot of success. 2021, he made just one start with the Detroit Tigers. Then 2022, he did not pitch at all. Last year, Tehran resurfaced with the Milwaukee Brewers. and had a 4-4-0 ERA in 14 games and 11 starts, 71 and two-third innings pitch. David Stearns was with the Brewers last year as an advisor. I don't know how much he advised them on signing Tehran, what his knowledge was, but the Mets were interested in Tehran at the beginning of spring training. It was between the Mets and the Orioles, and Tehran signed with the Orioles because they gave him a $100,000 signing bonus to go over there and to compete for a spot in their rotation, but he also had an opt-out. So he collected hundred k didn't make the team, opted out, and now he signs with the Mets here. Now, last season, Tehran had a 1-5-3 ERA in his first six starts. Then he faced... The New York Mets. That was at the end of June. The Mets put seven runs on him. And then uh, he ended up having a rough July where he pitched to the tune of an 8-3-1 ERA. Ended up out of the rotation. Did make some appearances in the bullpen in September. But overall, it was half of a season, really. Maybe not even that. Uh, I guess somewhere between a third and a half of the season there where he was part of that Brewers rotation. Found success, but... Still, if you look at all the advanced numbers, if you look at how hard he was hit, the chase rate, the strikeout rate, it's hard for me to get too excited for Tehran to join this rotation. The lone exception when it comes to his stats last year was his walk rate. He did not give up free passes at a 4.5% walk rate. With that said, I believe he had seven walks and 13 and a third innings pitched this spring. Did have 10 strikeouts, which would have been an improvement compared on his rates last year, but I would have liked to see no walks. 
I, I want him to be a control specialist, a guy that uh, is at least not going to give up free passes, is going to pitch to contact, and you hope that that defense that's supposed to be great, hasn't been yet, that the Mets put together this offseason, could actually deliver and help Tehran pitch a little bit better than you might expect. He did have a 3-3 ERA this spring, but I don't take much from that. The way I would try to conceptualize this signing for you is it's almost like bringing back Carlos Carrasco, and that's not going to get anybody excited. But Carlos Carrasco, we saw in 2022, if he's right, he's hitting his spots, if the other team is hitting the ball where there are gloves in the field, because sometimes it's almost just a matter of luck, um, not that these pitchers are solely luck based, they're veterans, but it's it's guys that have hittable stuff. And so sometimes the ball will be hit hard where your guys are placed in the field and it's going to look a lot better. And other times they're going to get absolutely shelled. So I I, I look at this sign and I say, all right, are the Mets in a better position to handle this stretch that Tyler McGill? Yes. Do I believe that Tehran is going to pitch to a sub four ERA and stay in the rotation all year. I do not. Do I think he can pitch to a sub four or five ERA and give you 10 decent starts for two and a half million dollars? Yeah, I think he could. So I, I don't, I'm not mad at the signing necessarily. It was necessary based on the position the Mets are in, but I didn't get the interest at the beginning of spring training. Because to me, Tehran, if it was a minor league deal, which I guess for the Orioles it was, but um, regardless, to me, Tehran is not a better pitcher than Jose Budo right now. Like I think Jose Budo uh, is a guy that I prefer to see in this rotation in McGill's place if he does miss some serious time. Um, again, it's not supposed to be, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, the fact that they went out to, to sign Tehran may, leaves a little bit of doubt at least, right, about when McGill is going to come back. To me, Budo or even Lucchese, I feel like could be better pitchers than Julio Tehran. With that said, it's depth, and you still have those other guys. And Budo could join a six-man rotation once he's eligible, either now April 12th or if he does get docked a day because of playing in the doubleheader, April 13th. So maybe we still get Budo in this rotation at some point, but when we look at where this group is right now, it does leave a lot to be desired. And I think while on the surface, you could say how much of a downgrade is Tehran from Tyler McGill based on what we've seen throughout McGill's career. It's probably not drastic. Tehran's got the experience, but McGill has an upside at least to a certain extent that I like a lot more than what Tehran is going to provide here. And there was a complete upside play that the Mets decided not to go with. So we'll get to all the different layers of this and also preview the doubleheader in the next segment here. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience are what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your car or truck, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And right now, if you're trying to go to this doubleheader, it's a single admission game. So, you can go to both games with one ticket, and I'm sure there's people that are trying to sell right now. Game time is the place to go for last-minute tickets. We're going to get the best prices possible, and they sell up to an hour after the game. So I imagine you might still be able to get into that second game of the doubleheader an hour after the first pitch of game one. You can see the seat of your or the view of your seat before you arrive. Know exactly what to expect. All-in prices show your total up front. 
it takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. So head over to the game time app. And for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with the code first pitch. Again, this is all users. So if you already have game time, you can still get in on this promotion. $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more by using the code first pitch. This offer is available from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the Mets will play their doubleheader against the Tigers today. The Tigers are the last undefeated team standing in Major League Baseball. The Marlins join the Mets when it comes to completely defeated teams. Uh, but this is the Mets' chance to get on the win column to knock those Tigers. And I think things have worked out in the Mets' favor a little bit because they were originally set to face Tariq Skubal, the Tigers' ace. Now with the doubleheader and the inclusion of a 27th man, they're going to face Matt Manning in Game 2 instead of Skubal, who will be saved to pitch in the Tigers' home opener. So everybody wins in this scenario. They get all the games that they don't have to make them up um, at a later time. And the Tigers, they do have that quick turnaround, but they get their ace on the mound for their home opener. So I think it really did end up working out when it comes to this weather. From a Mets perspective, Adrian Hauser, Game 1, Jose Budo, Game 2. Uh, and, and here's the rules with that. Okay, upon being optioned to the minor leagues, a position player typically must remain there for a minimum of 10 days before he's eligible to be recalled to that major league roster. For pitchers and two-way players, the minimum is 15 days. But if a player is serving as the 27th man for a doubleheader, there's no minimum number of days for which the option player must remain in the minors. So the point of this is they could call up Jose Budo, send him right back down, no harm, no foul. It's a great way now to get Budo to pitch a game here and not have to worry about all these different rules, having to designate someone because of an injury to get Budo up because that's the only way they could have got Budo up on another circumstance. They just wanted him to be the spot starter and, and to join the rotation. It would have to be because somebody got hurt. And obviously, with Billy Upler being suspended for the entire year after the Mets let him go, the investigation that went into the Mets, they got to be super careful with the whole phantom IL thing. So they can't be using that. The doubleheader really works out in the Mets' favor here. And I'm excited to get back to some Mets baseball. We got 48 hours to collect ourselves as a fan base. The team got 48 hours to take a nice breath as well. Hopefully, they will score early in this first game, take that pressure off. Maybe they hang a three spot in the first inning, and then they can relax. And who knows? I'm predicting a doubleheader sweep because why not predict it? Looking at how this rotation is going to shape up beyond the doubleheader now. Jose Quintana, Luis Severino, and Sean Manaya are expected to pitch in Cincinnati uh, throughout the weekend here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Anthony DeComo said in his article about Tehran signing that he would be a candidate to pitch on Monday. Remember, this signing is not official, which actually I should have maybe pointed that out in the first segment here. This signing will happen, but it won't immediately because the Mets are about to play a doubleheader and Johan Ramirez is still suspended for the first game of that doubleheader. And why force yourself to add him to the roster? Who knows? They might even delay this thing throughout the, the rest of the week. Why not? It would allow them to keep an extra reliever in their bullpen for that series in Cincinnati. Um, and then they can make the move, sign him officially on Sunday maybe, and have him join the rotation on Monday against the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. So, Really tough first matchup. Tehran, go ahead. Go face the second best lineup in all of baseball. Have fun. Uh, so we'll see how that all shakes out. But once we get to Tehran in the rotation, which will be on Monday, it'll be Tehran, Hauser, Katana, uh, Severino in that series against the Braves. What do you think the best chances are to win a game there? Not great. Not great. So the, the sad thing is, sort of need to win some games here, win some games against Cincinnati because I think they're going to lose at least three in Atlanta, you would think. But you never know. Teams can impress. The White Sox beat the Braves uh, in a game on, what was that, today? I don't remember if it was today or yesterday. Regardless, they did beat the Braves, so it is possible. And I will say that Quintana and Severino, they could fare pretty well. And you never know. Maybe Tehran 
is good for the first six starts after he signed somewhere like he was last year. So maybe he pitches great against the Braves. And I'm loving this signing a lot more. When it comes to the time that you're going to have here until Kodai Senga can return. Again, Jose Budo would have been able to return on the 12th. I don't know if this now pushes that to the 13th. But regardless, he will be eligible soon, as will Joey Lucchese. McGill can come off the IL on April 16th. He made it seem like it wasn't a serious injury, but we will see if he uh, needs more time, if he needs a rehab start. Who knows? This does give the Mets another option. And in that sense, I do like it. To me, I was talking myself into the Christian Scott promotion. I just was. And the reason being, I believe that he has a major league fastball. I really do. So I thought that he could hang in the big leagues and surprise. And there's an upside there that just does not exist really in this rotation. I mean, Severino, sure. Maybe he could put it all together. Shamanaya, we saw a great start, and I am intrigued to see more. But there's no young guy that you're tuning in for. This rotation is pretty bland right now. So to add a top prospect in the mix, from a fan perspective, it just would have added more intrigue. And I really do believe that Christian Scott would get better results in this rotation than Julio Tehran. I honestly believe that's two guys on the different end of the spectrum for their career, but stuff plays in the big leagues. It does. And Tehran throwing 89 compared to Christian Scott with, you know, 96 from a good arm slot that, that gets on hitters in a hurry. It's different. I mean, we saw major leaguers against Christian Scott that just could not catch up to him. So I would have preferred to see the Mets take that gamble to, to, to put him in the rotation, see what they got. You know that he could still use that development in AAA, but I feel like the fastball would have allowed him to survive. I get it. They didn't want to go that route, so they go with Tehran. Um, but I just look at this rotation right now, and Quintana, Severino, Manaya, Tehran, Hauser. It, it's hard for me to look at that, that starting five or that, that five-man rotation and say, yeah, this team can go on a run. Now, when you insert Kodai Senga into the, the mix there, and the best of Tehran, Hauser, Budo, Lucchese, McGill, whoever's left is rounding it out. Like, okay, I, I can see a, a world where this team can contend, but if you're waiting until the end of May for Senga to return, are you still going to be in the mix by that point? How far out of it will you be? Because from what we've just seen is the Mets lost some games in a hurry in a hurry. They could be completely out of the mix. They could be a disaster of a bottom dweller, and we could all just be in for a long season. So maybe it's my own personal panic as someone that has to not only watch this team every day, but create daily content for you all that wanted to see an upside play instead of a safe, you know, it feels like Jared Eikhoff to me, 2021. Uh, but no, it just, it just feels like a guy that's got some experience that you're going to throw out there. And you're just hoping that guys hit the ball hard in the right place. Um, whereas they had another option, even just getting to a point where Budo was the guy. That's my other thing is now that Tehran's getting two and a half million, are they just going to cut bait? Maybe it is a six man rotation. And if Budo is throwing the ball, well, that's how he gets into the fold. And then when McGill comes back, he does have an option. Maybe he's the one that that's out of luck, but I just don't know how committed they will be to Tehran. It's my other concern about this. If he has three shaky starts in a row to begin his his tenure here, are they going to keep running him out there? Or are they just going to look at his sunk cost and move on? These are the questions I have. But look, I hope he shoves on Monday against the Braves, gives them that seven scoreless and completely proves me wrong. I would be thrilled if that actually happens. We'll just see how it all ends up unfolding here. Uh, but this rotation is something to monitor. And you're going to need to see the lineup really pick them up here soon, which just hasn't been the case early on. So I'm hoping that the Mets flush those four games. They give you a doubleheader sweep today. And maybe they win a series in Cincinnati, split in Atlanta. And by this time next week, we are – in a completely different world as Mets fans, at least somewhat optimistic that the Mets can hang around 500 and be a fun team to watch this year. But 
I'm not going to hold my breath right now when this is the rotation that they have. So we'll see. In the final segment here, Jet Williams met with the media in Binghamton yesterday, and I want to go through what he said. It's pretty interesting. So we'll talk about that in the final segment. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less than on two or more player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over. The baseball season has started. So don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond to your prize pick entries. Here's the cool thing. You can, for one, pick on strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs, or you can even look at strikeouts, other things like that. But you can also do cross sports in your play. So you can look at, uh, let's see, Jose Budo strikeouts today. At the same time, you can look at LeBron James point scored, and you can combine the two of them in a single uh, pick. So that's really cool that you can do that. There's quick withdrawals, easy gameplay. It's why Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app. Prize Pick offers weekly promotions and special offers for the biggest moments in sports. Download the app today. Use the code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today. Use the code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. When the New York men signed Julio Tehran today, the first place I went was to subtext to let my locked on Mets insiders know. This is our texting service where you get updates whenever uh, something breaks on the Mets. After the signing was made official, I was discussing a lot of the things we talked about on the show today. Uh, how Jose Budo could be the 27th man of the doubleheader. How the rotation would be lined up over the next week here. So it's just a place to get the information sooner. You can also ask me questions anytime. You get text messages every day with the starting lineup graphic. So that's a cool feature that we're offering. And the giveaways are there for you as well. If you want to be a Lockdown Mets insider, you can find the link in the episode description or go to subtext.com slash Lockdown Mets. Jet Williams met with the media to, uh, I guess, preview the season in Binghamton the other night here. And you can find the video on YouTube just Look up Jet Williams and you can watch it. It was so minor leagues to see halfway through the interview, someone turned out a light and the lighting got worse. And they're standing outside of what's probably a freezing cold clubhouse in, in Binghamton. Uh, but Jet Williams handled that media session like a vet. And, and it's similar to the things that we were hearing throughout camp about how Jet Williams was really acclimating himself with the big league guys. And you know, it seemed like he fit. Like he was carrying himself like a big leaguer, like he belonged. And when asked about his goals this season, I thought his answer was perfect. Yes, he eventually got to the point that his goal is to make it to the big leagues. Last year, he said his goal was to make it up to double A. He did that. So he didn't shy away from saying he wants to be in the big leagues. He said that I think in the beginning of spring training. But when, when he was asked what his goal was, the first thing he said is, my goal is to be healthy. My goal is to compete every day to have my body ready because if you're not on the field, you're not helping anyone. And then I would like to end up making my debut this year. And a lot of the conversation was focused on that. What are you doing in double a, you know, I'm trying to be a sponge, learn everything I can learn how to get to the big leagues. And I stay in the big leagues. He even talked about the weather in Binghamton. This is his first time playing in cold weather. And so that's an adjustment that he's going to make and just try to go about his routine, get himself in a position where he can compete. Jet Williams is a guy that might really shock us this year as far as how he could end up in the big leagues quickly. I'm not saying he's going to end up here next week or next month, but we have seen in major league baseball, these different franchises where they have a prospect that seems like they can't miss putting up great at bats at a high level. And they just say, you know what? We're calling him straight from double A. And I would not be stunned if that happened. Now, here's the qualifiers. For one, the Mets have to be someone in the mix. The Mets have to have a team that is looking pretty solid, is in the hunt close to 500, and Jet has to have a monster season. But I believe he could be up this year. And I think he could even find himself up before Luis and Helicuna, who's on the 40 man roster. Because Acuna might struggle in AAA. And if Jet Williams is tearing the cover off the ball in AA 
and he's shown that same great plate discipline, and he has looked excellent defensively at second base or in center field. The Mets might decide, you know what? Uh, let's say Harrison Bader is still not hitting, and maybe Drew Gilbert's not hitting. The Mets say, you know what? We're just going to go to Jet, and we're going to call him up to be our starting center fielder. Or maybe it's Jeff McNeil, or maybe there's an injury. Whatever it could be, don't count out Jet Williams from finding his way up in the big leagues this year. He says he's going to make it, and I just wouldn't count this kid out from doing it. If you had to ask me today to put my money on Jet Williams making his debut this year, I would not put my money on either side of it, really, but particularly not that he'd make it because the Mets could be so far out of the race that it, there's no incentive to calling him up. He can get plenty of development in double A AA and triple A, and he could be knocking on the door where next spring he goes out and earns it, similar to what we saw White Langford do in Texas this spring training. He could make the opening day roster, and then you put him in position to vie for rookie of the year where you get that extra compensation if your player um, can finish in the top of an award there where you can get the extra draft pick, I think bonus pool money. So there is a lot of incentive to hold them back until next season. But if you're in the mix, that kind of goes out the window. So a lot has to go right. But just from seeing the way he carries himself, the way he answered those questions, and obviously off the heels of the great season he had in 2023, I'm just not betting against this kid to sort of shock the world here and, and leapfrog some other top prospects that are in AAA ahead of him right now. You'd figure on the depth chart, Jet could be that good. So we'll see what his season looks like. I'm excited to see minor league baseball kick off fully on Friday. We got AAA action already, although Syracuse have been rained out all week, just like the Mets. Uh, but all the other affiliates will start playing. So it'll be good to start to get some feedback on how these prospects are faring at their next stop in their professional career. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. Tomorrow's show, we'll have a doubleheader to break down, so I'm sure there'll be a lot from that that we will discuss, also previewing the weekend series. If you don't want to miss that show and you are listening, make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to make a push to 9,000 subs, so I appreciate all of you who are hitting subscribe. You want to follow me on X, you can do so at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. If you want to be a Locked On Mets insider, you can find the link in the episode description. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen or your first watch every day. And after your second watch, head over to YouTube to the first ever 24 7 streaming channel that covers everything in the world of sports. Of course, I'm talking about Locked On Sports today with our local experts from each team and our league wide experts from each league. Find Locked On Sports today streaming 24 7 on YouTube.